Hey guys, it's Zach. Welcome back to the homestead. I'm going to show you guys what I'm doing today. We are doing pepper harvest. Uh, you saw before in one of the other videos we talked about the Numex Twilights and some of the other peppers that were growing here on the homestead. And uh, we love hot peppers here. Let me show you what I got so far and what I'm going to do. Right now I've been going through and harvesting these uh, Numex Twilights. And believe me when I say they are pain in the butt. Uh, there's just so many of them. And really they're not that big. So uh, it's just you get in here and you get into the plant and you're just going through and you're just picking them one at a time and the bigger ones are usually down towards the center here and so the smaller ones are up top you know the ones who haven't changed colors yet are, are fully developed and so uh yeah you're picking these two but it's just so much work involved and it's kind of getting my fingers purple but you know there's just so many of these things and i'm just kind of going through and harvesting the biggest ones down towards the center and they're kind of all gone now but there has been uh, just a pain going through all of these and finding them all and, and just putting them in, in the container. And so I got a bunch more over here and I'm just going to have to go through there and just pick all these. These are definitely going to be, uh, you know, <laughs> making my life miserable for the next uh, day or so as I pick, all, pick through all these. But, you know, I'm going to dry all these out and they're going to be basically pepper powder. And so that's what we're going to do with those. Uh, coming up here in the next couple days. I'm gonna put all these in the dehydrator many of these in the dehydrator Which is my car uh, in the next couple days and we'll get uh, These dried out and then we'll put them in the pepper flakes that we can use on our food uh, the rest of the year next year So anyway, what do I got here? I got a whole bunch of piles um, Of different types of peppers. So let me put these in that pile. There's the New Mex Twilights There are the Odom Indian Pequins and uh, it took me a while to harvest all those too. I basically just uprooted the plants. Um, I have some bunch of jalapenos here. Those are some sweet peppers. These are all poblanos. Can anyone say stuff po poblano? Absolutely. These are, in fact, I just like eating them raw. I don't know about you, but I mean, there's a little bit of spice to them, but boy, these are just delicious. Anyway, um, these guys, these are the ones I mentioned in the last video. They were just on fire. These things. I don't know what they are, but I'm telling you, man, one of these things blows me away. I, put, I can usually stand a good whole, easy. I can stand a whole jalapeno in my, in my, uh, in a in a meal. Uh, but these guys, they're really pushing me. And I don't know what they are. I didn't plant them, and I mentioned that in the other video. I didn't plant these things, but man, I'm telling you, these things are rocking. Uh, I, you know, I did plant some ghost peppers. You know, when I was starting the seedlings, I started everything from seed this year. And I started some ghost peppers, and, they, and and as far as I could tell, none of them took off. Maybe I mixed them up. I don't know if it's possible or not, but maybe these were actually a ghost pepper plant that cross-pollinated with these guys because they were really close together. I mean, these were not more than a foot or two apart. Could it is it possible that a ghost pepper um, cross-pollinated with this, and this is what it turned out like? I don't know. All I know is that I don't remember planting these guys, and they are extremely hot. What else do we got? Uh, so yeah, there's the sweet peppers, jalapenos, um, Odom Indian Pequins, New Mex Twilights, Mystery Pepper on fire, and then uh, Poblanos. And so what I got is a bunch of other sweet peppers on these plants over here, and they're doing good. And I'm going to kind of leave them alone because I want to be able to harvest some. I got some friends coming, and they're going to be camping with us uh, in the next uh, week or so. And uh, we're going to be doing a pizza night in the brick oven. And I figured, you know, that'd be great, I think, that if we could you know, pick out some of these fresh, some of the fresh produce that we can use as toppings for the pizzas. And so I think we're going to do that. I'm going to leave these um, peppers, some of these peppers, sweet peppers on the vine till then. And then we'll just pick them all that night and slice them up and use them as toppings, or part of the toppings that we're going to be using for the pizzas. But that's what I got going on right now. Let me take you over. I'm going to show you my sun chokes and give you my sun choke strategy. Okay, so the garden is really overgrown right now. The weeds and the grass have just come up everywhere because I've been not caring. I've been a bit too busy harvesting to deal with anything else. Uh, you know, the beginning part of the season when I was planting everything, I was really worried about all the weeds and stuff and making sure it all looked nice. But, you know, at the point when you're harvesting like crazy and I can't keep up with that, uh, keeping up with weeds is just... I mean, there's really not a point anymore because everything that you want to grow has grown. So, um, what I did, I had to, a friend of ours who gave us some um, sunchokes and uh, which are Jerusalem artichokes and I put them here just kind of to hold them off until I could find a better place to put them and I never got around to it and so they've sprouted up and they're easy you know 10 foot tall you know sun chokes now and I mean they're they've kind of bowled over because they're, they're so long and tall and 
what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to dig these up. I'm going to let them go till winter. They say you can harvest them, as, you know, in the winter time. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep these well watered from here on out in the fall. And I've read that you should you should do that in you know online that you should keep these well watered in the fall. And then I'll dig them up. And then I will maybe I'll keep maybe a few, but then I'm going to replant them in a bed. What I don't want to have happen, if you know anything about sunchokes and Jerusalem artichokes, that if they get started somewhere and you're not careful, they will take over your garden. And so I don't want to do that. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a raised bed for these guys, and I'm going to put them in a place where they cannot escape and just go from there. But uh, I kind of, you can see, they're all, I just put them right here because I just wanted to keep them alive, and they sure did stay alive. They grew uh, exponentially. But I want to make sure I can keep these for next year because, you know, you can do a lot with Jerusalem artichokes. And I even read that in Germany they make a liqueur, out of Jerusalem artichokes. So I think that would be uh, kind of cool. Anyway, that's my Jerusalem artichoke uh, patch and I'm gonna be harvesting that in the winter. But for the most part, everything else in the garden has been dug up and harvested to the max and the weeds or the grasses have kind of taken over. We've canned so much stuff uh, that there's just not a lot left uh, to, to, you know, we've got all of our food for the winter already packed up. One other thing I've got still over here are these onions. Uh, these onions I planted just a few months ago. These are some kind of giant chives that my neighbor gave me. He grows these year after year. And uh, they're not bulb onions. They're just kind of like these chives. And some of these have gotten really big. Uh, if you can see here, they've gotten pretty big. And so, um, and they're actually, some of them do actually bulb, it looks like. Like this one here is kind of bulbing. But it's mostly it's just a giant chive. And I'm gonna start harvesting these soon. But you know, it's not ready yet. They're, they're just now starting to turn tan. But, uh, you know, soon. We'll, we'll get on these soon. And then that'll be it. And then after that is done, we are going to go ahead and get started on putting uh, all the fresh manures and fresh wood chips on the garden and getting this thing ready to produce again next spring. So, all right, that's the check-in from the homestead. I thought I'd give you an update. This is really going to be the last garden update, I think, for the year when it comes to food and produce because I've gotten everything at this point and there's just nothing else really left to get. So, all right, we'll see you next time on the homestead.